Brother Simon's 182nd article, Christ saved us from death by dying. Yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Born Again, Christ's death doesn't save us from hell because hell straight up ain't nothing but a myth. One conjured by our adversary Satan to diminish Jesus Christ's sacrifice, which was 100% successful and saved 100% of his father's creation. Dig what Paul, the apostle of the nations, has to say about the introduction of death into the world. Through one man, sin entered into the world, and through sin, death. <coughs> and then thus death passed through into all mankind, on which all sinned. Romans 5.12 Adam's transgression of eating the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Genesis 2.16, not only introduced sin into the world, but that sin that and introduced death into the world. And from that point forth, death was passed on to all mankind. Recall God's instruction to Adam. From every tree of the garden you may eat. Yeah, eat, but from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you must not eat from it. For on the day you eat from it, to die you shall be dying. Genesis two sixteen through 17. To die, you shall be dying. In other words, the death process or the process of dying would become the lot of every human. From the moment we take our first breath, we begin to die. That's the bad news. The good news is that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. 1 Timothy 1.15, and guess what? He was 100% successful. Dig, for if by the offense of the one, the many died, much rather the grace of God and the gratuity in grace which is of the one man, Jesus Christ, to the many superabounds. Romans 5.15 Yeah, I know Mr. and Mrs. Born Again believe the many doesn't include all mankind, so rather than arguing, I'll just quote the passage of Scripture, which implicitly states, all will be saved. For since, in fact, through a man came death, through a man also comes the resurrection of the dead. For even as in Adam all are dying, thus also in Christ shall all be vilified. 1 Corinthians 15, 21 through 22. Shall all be vilified. To be vilified is to be given life beyond the reach of death, to be made immortal. I think now is a good time to take a gander at the word death because there's a lot of confusion among, mis among the Mr. and Mrs. Born Agains of the world and the rest of you religious folk about what death is. Most of you will believe our adversary's first lie, commonly known as the mortality of the soul. Recall the story? Now the serpent, it became more crafty than any other animal, animal of the field that Yahweh Elohim had made. The serpent said to the woman, Indeed did Elohim say you shall not eat from every tree of the garden. The woman replied to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, yet... Uh, the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, Elohim said, You shall not eat from it, and you shall not touch it, lest you should die. But the serpent said to the woman, Not to die shall you be dying. Genesis 3, 1-4 through 4. Not to die shall you be dying. Which is totally went against what God told Adam, To die you shall be dying. So then death, the Greek word for death, is transliterated thanatos. And Strong's concordance defines the word as death. The Greek-English keyword concordance to the concordant literal New Testament gives the English element of thanatos as death and defines the word thusly, death. The return of the body to the soil, the spirit to God, and the soul to the unseen. Death is the utter absence of life, non-existence. Remember, we don't have souls. We are souls. Now let's recall Paul's evangel or good news. Now I'm making known to you, brethren, the evangel which I bring to you, which also you accepted, in which also you stand, through which also you are saved. If you are retaining what I said and bringing the evangel to you outside and accept, you believe faintedly. For I give over to you among the first, which also I accepted, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was entombed, and that he has been roused the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Christ died for our sins. For three days we, he had no awareness whatsoever. His body returned to the soil. His spirit returned to God, and his soul returned to the unseen. Recall Solomon's words, For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know nothing whatsoever. 
Ecclesiastes 9.5 The dead know nothing whatsoever. Death is not a gateway to another life. Your Aunt Mary ain't singing Kumbaya in heaven right now. Nor is your wicked Uncle Ernie being turned into a burnt weenie in hell. Neither. They're dead. They do not exist in any other realm. They have no existence. Mary is an ex-aunt and Ernie is an ex-uncle. This is why Christ's resurrection is so vitally important. He was dead, completely dead. He suffered the same anonymous end as the rest of mankind. Yet his father roused him from Yet his father roused him after three days and vilified him for him to be firstborn among many brethren. Romans 8.29, the firstborn of the one new humanity, Ephesians 2.15. One new humanity, you dig? Christ left the old humanity in the tomb, dead, where it belongs. Jesus Christ was the trailblazer for all of us. Without his death for sin, we would all remain in the death state forever upon our eventual demise, because all of us humans are sinners. Recall Paul's words, for all sinned and are are wanting of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. And for the ration of sin is death, Romans 6.23. Death, not hell. Jesus Christ saved us from death by dying, and dying for our sins, all those mistakes, failures, and transgressions we made. And he will also be the one who will eventually abolish death forever, Dig. For Christ must be reigning until he should be placing all his enemies under his feet, the last enemies being abolished, death. 1 Corinthians 15, 25-26. Godspeed that day, huh? In the meantime, we can rest assured that since Jesus Christ died and died for our sins, and since his Father roused him on the third day, we no longer have to fear death. His lot will be made our lot, guaranteed. One new humanity, remember? That is why it's called the good news. I commend to you the following video by my friend and fellow brother in Christ. Wow, for a scriptural study on the word died. Love, grace, and peace. Have a wonderful day and wonderful night, and God bless you all. And this time, there is sound. I made sure to click the mic button.